all right good afternoon ladies and gentlemen it's your favorite animal scientist again mr kester amos so uh today we're going to be talking about uh snail farming the importance of snail to man and also we'll be looking at some of the char characteristics and uh, some of the different species of snails that are farmed in africa all right so uh before you start snail farming like i said last time uh there are four key things that must be known to us so i will just take that again as we begin this part of the training uh which is number one the snails are hermaphrodites as a result of that they have both male and female reproductive organs uh snails or every snail lays egg you don't have a male and a female two so the snails are vegetarian so their basal feed are vegetables and fruits and three they are cold blooded animals uh, as a result of that they are largely influenced by their environment so we must ensure that we provide the, uh, the right type of habitat for the snails to thrive and also lastly we said they are nocturnal animals uh, by that we mean they are very active at night during the daytime they may not pose a threat to anyone they may not have any impact on their uh, environment but at night they come alive so they are nocturnal animals so i take that again they are hermaphrodites they are cold-blooded they are vegetarians and they are nocturnal animals so you must understand these things if you want to deal with snails so you know when to feed them and how to manage the animals so you don't think that you have a male animal and a female animal in your pen no and also one thing you need to know is snails of different species don't breed they don't cross so there's no such thing as hybrid snails I've heard people talk about hybrid snails. From what I have studied as an animal scientist and true literature, I was made to understand that snails are very selective in breeding. They don't cross breed. Even the same species of snails from very distant uh, origins and locations find it very difficult to cross. Not to talk about two different species or breeds of snails. So snails do not cross breed. And if they don't crossbreed, then we don't have what is called hybrid snail. All the snails we farm are from the wild, and years of captivity have made them to become more conversant with a uh, uh, pen and going out system. So we don't have what is called hybrid snails. Now, apart from that, the snail is very nutritious in our diet. It has almost 12 to 18 percent crude protein. And it has a fat level of 0.05 to 0.8 percent and also uh, it has high on content in its meat which is about 50 uh, milligram per kilogram 40 to 50 milligram per kilogram of iron is found in the snail meat so this is why many doctors recommend snail meat for pregnant women to be consumed by pre pregnant women which will help them to deliver uh, uh deliver safely so snails are very important in fact the nutritional benefits of snails cannot be overemphasized even the medicinal benefits of snails uh we're not here to talk much about the uh, literature reviews of snail this class is strictly for production so i wouldn't want to delve too much into the medicinal and nutritional values of snails but what you need to understand is that the crude protein level of snail is very high and we as man we consume animals strictly because of its protein content and snail is one of those animals that have very high levels of protein and also the levels of cholesterol is very low because it has a crude fat level of 0.05 to 0.8 percent and while the high on content in the meat is 40 to 50 milligram per kilogram of the snail meat so this makes it a very valuable uh, a food to our uh, diets so snail has really lots of good importance to man when it comes to the nutrition of the meat so those are some of the things we need to know and of course uh, there are different types of snails there are hundreds of different species but today we'll be talking about the four edible land snails uh, there are some snails that are not edible and there are some snails that are edible so not all snails are edible as you would know we have aquatic snails and terrestrial snails the aquatic snails are water snails that live in water 
and the terrestrial snails are snails that live on land so we are talking about the four edible species of land snails now uh you you must have heard the word giant african land snails now many people mistake this word to be one particular snail no the word giant african land snail encompasses all four species of edible land snails now the mistake people make is they take this snail to be one particular snail no we have different species now the species we are going to be talking about today are mainly the akatina and the akakatina the akatina and the akakatina are the names of the genus or genera as you will call it then the species name is the akak is the marginata you have akakatina marginata so the genus is akakatina the species is marginata then you have the akatina akatina which is the both the genus and the species name is called akatina akatina so we're going to show you samples of those snails of course you see them on the screen as uh, we proceed with the lecture so uh, we're going to be talking about these four edible land snails and the akakatina marginata has different subspecies and breeds of over 10 to 15 different snails that are called akakatina marginata akakatina marginata is not a single snail it has different subspecies under it then you also have the akatina akatina you also have subspecies under akatina of which akatina akatina is one you have the akatina fulica is also part of the subspecies of the akatina species yeah, you, when you come to the akakatina you have the akakatina marginata marginata you have the akakatina marginata ovum you have the akakatina marginata suturalis you have the akakatina marginata dignaris so they are different subspecies under akakatina the Akakatina is more like the great grandfather's name everybody bears in the family. You have Kesta Amos, you have Esther Amos, you have Kinsley Amos. So Amos is more like the Akakatina. Why the Kesta, Esther, Kinsley are more like the subspecies? So that is how it is with snails. So many people just think when you say Akakatina marginata, you're talking about one particular snail. Or when you say giant African land snail, I want giant African land snail. There are different species of snails that mix up that word giant African land snail. But the brain behind it is these and these snails are of African origin. So that's why we call them giant African land snails. And some of them are large, some of them are small. So we're going to be looking at the Akakatina marginata species and the Akatina Akatina species. Now the Akakatina marginata species, we farm two major species in Nigeria. One is the Akatina marginata, Akakatina marginata ovum. This is the snail you found in the southwestern region of the country. If you go to from Edo State to Lagos State, excuse me, between Edo, in fact, you see it between the Benin Ore Expressway by the roadside. They are very bogus snails, they're very big in size. That's what we call the Akakatina marginata ovum. It's commonly found in the western hemisphere. The forest there, they are forested snails from the west. You find them in Ogun State, Ondo State, or your state, Lagos State, uh, Edo State. But when you come down south, you have another type of Akakatina, which is called the Akakatina marginata suturalis. From the Delta, Bielsa, Cross River, Calabar down to the southeastern part. That's the species of snails we have. It has a pinkish apex, so I call it reddish apex. The tail end of the snail is what we call apex. So it is pinkish compared to the bulgous big size of the Akakatina marginata ovum. Now the difference between these two species of Akakatina is that the marginata ovum grows very fast and very big, but do not lay much eggs. It can give you between 20 to 30 eggs in the whole year. Yeah, you can quote me. It can give you between 20 to 30 eggs in the whole year. And each egg, uh, each, each laying, a clutch of eggs will come out in probably between 4 to 14 eggs. I am speaking from my experience. What I have experienced, 
the highest number of eggs I have picked from the Akakatina marginata uh, ovum is 14. And the least I have seen is 4. So I can tell you categorically that Akakatina marginata ovum will produce between 4 to 14 eggs in a clutch. The clutch is the number of eggs that are laid in a, a particular time at a period of time. The same for the Akakatina marginata suturalis that is more commonly found in the south, south and southeast. But the difference is the suturalis lays more frequent than the ovum. So they will give you up to 60 eggs in a year. And they can adapt to different environmental conditions. I have found the marginata ovum and suturalis across the nation. And I found that the suturalis performs better than the ovum. Even in the southwestern states, the suturalis will lay more, do more, do better than the ovum, survive even better than the ovum. Because in terms of survivability, the suturalis is also surviving more than the ovum. The ovum is more of a fragile species. It's the, it records a higher rate of mortality. It records a, a poor egg production, but the only advantage it has over the suturalis is that it grows very big and very quite fast as well. So that's the difference between the suturalis ovum and the suturalis and the ovum, which are Acacatina marginata suturalis and Acacatina marginata ovum. So these are the two major species of snails that we farm in Nigeria and that has a huge market demand. But we also have other species of snails in Nigeria, like the Akatina folica. It's commonly found around the west and part of the north. When it rains, you find them walking around gardens. They are quite small. You can see the picture of the snail on your screen. And they have a very pointed apex compared to the marginata species. One thing that differentiates the Akakatina from the Akatina is the pointed apex. The apex, I said, is the tail, that pointed part of the snail. For the Akakatina species, it is broad and blunt. But for the Akatina species, it is pointed almost like the mouth of a beak. That's how the tail end is. So the Akatina fulica is a common species of snail also found in Nigeria but does not command a high market value here in Nigeria. But people consume it all the same. But when you talk about commercial snails, you're talking more about the ovum and the suturalis, which are both of the Akatina, Akakatina marginata species. Then we also have the Akatina fulica, uh, which is the one we are talking about, uh, you saw on the screen. It does not have a huge market demand, but it is also edible. Then we also have the Akatina Akatina. This is also called the, Jana, the Ghana giant snail because it is commonly grown and red in Ghana. If you go to Ghana, people don't care a hood about these our marginata snails. All they care about is the Akatina Akatina. Another name for the Akatina Akatina is tiger snail. If you look at the shell color, it has black and yellow stripes running side by side. And it resembles that of the tiger skin. And that is why it is called the tiger snail. This snail produces large quantities of eggs or large volumes of eggs. They can produce between 200 to 400 eggs in a single clutch. And they can produce these clutches three times to four times a year. So the productivity of the snail is very high. And it is also highly commercial in Ghana. But here in Nigeria, we still don't have a good market value for this snail. It is a rare species and a rare breed in Nigeria. But in Ghana, the species is highly valued. The reasons I do not know, down here in the south, we don't have it at all. And some I brought in some down here in the south and some persons were asking what kind of snail is this. That's to tell you that we don't know much about it in terms of uh, nutrition here in Nigeria. But in Ghana, it's the snail, it's a snail that is most profitable for production. 
Then finally, we have the Limicularia aurora. The Limicularia aurora, as you can see on the screen, is the one that kids play with while we live in the villages. You scarcely have those things in cities, urban areas. But if you grew up in the village like me, we dig a small shallow hole and we use them to compete. That is what we call toy or costo. Uh, that's the best I can describe it. But the scientific name for the snail is Limicularia aurora. This snail produces between 45 to 50 eggs in a particular clutch. The eggs are quite tiny. They are very tiny. And same goes for the eggs of the Akatina, Akatina and the Akatina folica. They lay white eggs in their hundreds that looks like purple seeds. And on ripe purple, a green purple, when you split it open, you see the seeds inside are whitish and small. That is how these eggs are. Now, in terms of production, in Nigeria here, we do more of the marginata. The reason is because there is market for it. And like I advised in the introductory video, do not farm a product that does not have market. Study your environment before you farm any animal. And ensure that the animal is in high demand within your locality. So that is how you know what to go into in terms of agriculture. It's general. So the marginata fully, uh, oven and marginata suturalis are the best species for production here in Nigeria. But we are also introducing the Ghana giant species, which is the Akatina Akatina, the tiger snail. It also grows into a massive size. In fact, when I was in Ghana and I saw that species of snail, I was amazed. It was massive. So it's something we can also uh, cul uh, culture here and it will do very well. Now, the difference is the marginal species will do perfectly well in the pen and both in the greenhouse. But the Akatina, Akatina and Akatina fulica, because of their small egg size, they perform best in the greenhouse or under a free range system where they can live naturally without any disturbances. So these are the four edible species of land snails we'll be talking about. Then the other thing we'll be looking at is sources of foundation stock. Where must you buy your foundation snails from? Foundation snails are not snails for consumption, but they are snails that you want to use to farm. Where should you get them from? We have five sources of foundation stock. Number one is the snail farm. You buy from a snail farmer. Two is research institutes, like the university teaching farms, polytechnics, and so on. They have snails in their animal science department. Then we also have directly from the bush, snails that are acquired from the bush directly. And also we have retailers and the open market. These are the five sources you can get snails for production. But the best out of these five sources remains the snail farm and directly from the bush. Now, the three other options, which are the research institutes, orcas, and market, these snails have been stressed. Like you go to universities, they are teaching farms, they use the snails for experiment. So the snails are going through one stress or the other. So their productivity is low. The same for snails that are sold by orcas, people will carry them on trees and oak, and also people will sell them on the roadside and in the market. They bag these snails for how long, we don't know. They bring them to the market every day, they don't sell them, they take them back to the house and bring them again. So, these snails are not good for production. The best species for production are snails that are reared in the farm. And snails that are gotten directly from the bush through snail hunters. The reason is the ones from the farms, they have gotten used to life in captivity and have been producing under this condition. So they are perfect for you to start your farm with. If you want breeding snails, we can supply you because we have a snail farm running for years. Then two, snails gotten directly from the bush also represent a good source of foundation because the snails are still active and are still doing well. The little challenge you will have is they will take time to adjust to life in captivity because they were not used to a small enclosure. They move as they will. 
as they want in the wild but now coming into captivity they will find it a little bit difficult to adjust into life in captivity and in the course of that you may have some level of mortality here and there but as time goes on they will adjust and perform just fine then the second drawback is you don't know the age of the snails because they are brought from the forest you are not able to identify how old the snails are besides those two drawbacks snails from the forest gotten through directly from the hunters not from market women who may have stockpiled them for weeks and months is the second best source for snail farming now we'll look at the criteria for selection we've talked about the types of snails the species of snails and now we're going to look at the sources of foundation that is where we are going to end to this class sorry we are going to look at the criteria for selection now the, we have four criteria for selection what i mean is what you should look out for before picking a snail for breeding number one is fecundity fecundity is defined as the expected number of eggs based on the number that were laid in previous seasons now previous seasons can be a month or two based on the number of eggs this set of snails have made in two months ago you can now decide that oh the snails are good for production because they are efficient in egg laying but if they have not been laying efficiently then you cannot buy such snails for production so fecundity which has to do with the expected number of eggs based on the number laid in previous seasons is the first characteristics you look out for in selecting breeding snails two is archability Archability has to do with the total number of snails that were hatched out of the total number that were laid. Because not all the eggs that were laid will hatch. We've talked about fecundity will hatch to do with, which has to do with laying of eggs. Now we're now looking at the hatching of the eggs. Snail eggs are not sold in the market. Nobody has value for snail eggs except for people who may want to use them for ritual activities. I don't know. But well, besides that, I don't know anybody that wants to start a snail farm with snail eggs, knowing that snails grow slowly. So we don't have much value for snail eggs, like poultry eggs. So the snail eggs does not really matter. What matters is how many of these eggs will lay to snail. Sorry, will ash to snails. So that is what hatchability is about. The expected number of eggs that will hatch off to the, out of the total number that were laid. Now, if 100 eggs were laid and only 5 can hatch, then that's not a good species. But if 50 eggs were laid and 40 will hatch out of the 50, then that's a good species of snail. So that is what we are talking about. The number of eggs laid may not count much, but how many of these eggs that hatches is what counts most. So hatchability has to do with the expected number of hatchlings from the total number of eggs that were laid. Then 3. We we'll look at establishment rates. The establishment rate has to do with how many of these eggs that have been laid and hatched that will grow into mature snails. That is where we now talk about mortality. Now, for instance, the Acacatina marginata ovum, we said lays between 20 to 60 eggs, both ovum and suturalis, while the Acatina acatina lays between 200 to 400 eggs. Now, but the mortality rate of the Akakatina, uh, the Akatina Akatina is way higher than the Akakatina Marginata. But as much as it's high, it still has a good establishment rate because not more than 50% will be lost. But in the case of the Marginatas, you may only lose 20%. So you see that mortality rate for Akakatina Marginata and Akatina Akatina differs. So for Akatina Akatina, you are expecting almost 50% mortality. While for Akakatina Marginata, you are expecting 20% mortality. So you can now understand that the establishment rate is also very important, which has to do with the number of eggs that hatched that will grow into actual mature snails for you to sell. Because not many persons buy baby snails. You want your snails to be fully matured for you to market them. So the establishment rate has to do with how many of these snails that have hatched will grow to table size. Then lastly, we we'll talk about growth rates. The rates of the growth. Now compared between the ovum and the suturalis, you understand that the ovum grows faster. But we said the drawback is it is fragile. 
it has a higher rate of mortality it does not lay enough eggs as the suturalis but in terms of growth it is faster and bigger than the suturalis so growth rate is also a factor one should consider or a criteria one should consider in selecting breeding stock so these are some of the things we must understand now for the business of snail farming i personally will advise you to get snails of higher level of productivity than growth why because for instance the ovum grows bigger and faster but it does not lay much the ovum sells point of lay cells for 500 suturalis point of lay cells for 350 now if you have 1000 ovum within one year you will get not more than 5000 produced from 1000 snails but if you have 1000 suturalis within one year you will have not less than 20,000 snails produced from 1,000 suturalis. So as a businessman, you should be looking at the numbers. Now, if you sell 5,000 snails for 500 for one, that's about 2.5 million. Now, make a calculation of 20,000 snails for 350 naira for one. You will see that the smaller size snail with high rev level of productivity will make a better business uh, investment returns for you compared to the bigger snail that does not lay much egg. So these are some of the things you must understand in either going into snail farming or selecting your breeder stock. So this class today, we've talked about the four characteristics you must know about snails before venturing into snail farming, which are they are hermaphrodites, they are cool-blooded animals, they are vegetarians, and they are nocturnal animals. Then we talked about the four edible species of land snail. You have the Acacatina marginata, the Acacatina catina, the Acacatina folica, and the Limicularia aurora. And also we talked about different subspecies under the Acacatina marginata and under the Acacatina catina. So we'll display some of these species on the screen for you to see. As you can see, uh, we have lots of them coming under the Acacatina and under the Acacatina marginata. All right, so we also talked about the sources of foundation stock, where you should buy snails from if you want to start a snail farm. One is a snail farm. Two is directly from the bush through hunters who go to hunt snails. Three, research institutes. Four, orchards. And five, uh, markets. And we discourage you from buying from the markets, the orchards, and the research institutes. Instead, buy from a snail farmer or directly from the bush. And we talked about the characteristics or sorry the criteria for selection which is fecundity archability and then um, establishment rate and growth rate so this is where we we'll end our lectures for today thank you i'm sure it has been worth the time